Be'eri Kibbutz, Israel. And for more on the Israel-Gaza conflict, we're joined in studio by Jeremy Liebler, President of the Zionist Federation of Australia. Good afternoon to you, Jeremy. Now, Jewish Australians are trying to get back from Israel at the moment. How is that going so far? Well, I think Jewish Australians that are in Israel um, are in a state of despair. Um, some have been living in Israel, um, are dual citizens, and are obviously most of them are remaining and being there to support their families. Um, others that are there travelling, visiting family, uh, many of them are trying to get back. Uh, many commercial flights have been cancelled and the government is now assisting in repatriation flights. That, that's welcome news and these repatriation flights are, are now coming? But they are, um, and, but it's a day-by-day -day, day -day issue. I want to talk a little bit about what's happening back home. How is the Jewish community in Melbourne feeling about what's happened overseas? We know that security has been bolstered around schools and so forth, but how's the community feeling? Well, we're in a, in a state of, on the one hand, just immense grief. Um, you need to understand that almost every single member of the Australian Jewish community knows someone directly impacted by these events. I know people whose children are presumed kidnapped or missing or dead, that have lost children, um, that have lost friends. And so this is very, very personal. And yet while we are processing that grief and frankly having to explain to our children, this is a very post-Holocaust community we have here in Australia, yeah. highest proportion of Holocaust survivors outside of Israel mm. as, on a per capita basis. And I never thought I'd have to explain to my children um, that there are Jewish babies being decapitated and murdered. Um, in Israel today and at the same time as doing that I have to explain to them why there are Australians on the streets in Sydney chanting gas the Jews. Um, there was a, um, a, a report last night about a car being driven around very close to where I live with people sticking their heads out of the window saying where are the Jews? I think the police um, arrested them. So there is a high state of anxiety within the Jewish community at the moment. What has been the response from the Australian political leaders? Has, how has that been received so far? Look, we've had very strong support on a bipartisan basis. Um, I met with the Prime Minister um, yesterday together with other Jewish leaders and he reaffirmed his support that he will stand by Israel. Peter Dutton, the leader of the opposition, has been incredibly supportive, made it very clear that, you know, um, from his perspective, Australia should do whatever it takes to support um, Israel at this time. Um, at the same at the state level. And let me say, on the overwhelming majority of Australians um, are reaching out and sending enormous messages of support, and that means a lot. But we have, there are exceptions, and some of the, the behaviour that we've seen on the streets, and frankly within some of our universities, is deeply, deeply troubling. I want to ask you a bit about what's happening overseas now. We understand that about 300,000 troops are appear to be gathering on, on the border with Gaza at the moment. Um, in the short term, where does this end? Well, Israel has suffered, I mean, just to frame the, the, the scale of the disaster here, has suffered more Jewish Israelis have died in one day <clears throat> than any sign since the Holocaust. So Israel needs to respond. It needs to eradicate Hamas out of Gaza. And unfortunately, the only way to do that is by a ground invasion. Um, they could have done this at any time in the past, but they didn't want to risk the civilian casualties and they didn't want to risk the lives of Israeli soldiers but it's clear now that when you're dealing with this sort of barbarity on the scale of ISIS there's just simply no alternative. What does that look like, that response? No doubt that will result in innocent lives being lost so at what cost does that come? Yeah, well, well, well this is the question, I mean this is the same question that the Americans faced in dealing with um, the Taliban in Afghanistan, it's exactly the same issue that the Allies faced in World War II when they had to um, do whatever it took to defeat Hitler and the Nazis. What we are seeing here from Hamas is a modern-day manifestation of Nazism. And let me tell you something. The only difference between then and now is that there is a State of Israel and a, and a defence force um, of the State of Israel that will defend um, its citizens. That didn't happen, that didn't exist in 1939, it exists today and Israel will and must defend itself. Where does this end up though? This, this is already a humanitarian crisis as we know in Gaza. They don't have hospitals, they're overrun, they don't have power, they don't have water. Innocent people are, are going to be killed. How do, you, 
how do you rationalise that with a, an incredible ground invasion and air assault that could could level level Gaza? Well, simply that there is simply no alternative at the moment, and. Is it we can't negotiate, we can't speak to other, other people, we can't take this to the UN, there's no, no avenues for that? Well, I, I, I'm curious, um, were, were there any calls to negotiate with ISIS in Syria? Were there calls to negotiate with the Taliban? Could you negotiate with Hitler? These are people that are severing the heads off babies, off babies. They haven't even found all of the bodies. There are no negotiations with these barbaric individuals. There will be innocent people, which is an enormous tragedy that will die when Israel needs to go in. Those deaths are on Hamas's conscience. Those deaths, Hamas hides behind civilians. They store rockets in the basements of hospitals. Where are their leaders? Their leaders are in Qatar, living in mansions. They have robbed the Palestinian people. They have stolen from them. And now they're putting their lives at risk in order to pursue this, their agenda of murdering Jews. I wanted to ask you a big couple of questions because there's a lot of big statements in there, but sure. if we can sort of compact it, but what is, in your opinion, the root cause of this conflict? You know, I have to be honest with you. I find the question offensive. I find the question offensive is because no one asked the question, what is the root cause of ISIS? This has gone back so long and so many no, people... It's, it's, no, it, no, no, it, it has not gone back so long. This is an organisation, a designated terrorist organisation, whose ideology is to murder Jews. It's in their charter. You don't need to look, go, look far. But let me explain something to you. I understand you're asking the question. Nothing's changed. The Hamas of today is the same Hamas of a year ago. It's the same Hamas of six months ago, right? The only difference is that Israel has been able to prevent mass tragedy on the scale that has just taken place. Unfortunately, they were not able to do so in this event. So the world is seeing the real colours of Hamas, but nothing's changed. And when there are people marching through the streets of Melbourne or Sydney chanting, Palestine will be free from the river to the sea, let me tell you, that is code for the annihilation of Israel and the annihilation of the Jewish people, once again. But it won't happen again. We, we have the Israeli Defence Minister saying Hamas needs to be wiped off of the face of the earth. Is that not code for the, the annihilation of Gaza? No, it's code for... It's not code for anything. It's very clear. It's for the annihilation of a terrorist organisation. No with, different... With, with, with innocent civilians no. within, ha that, within that, though. Hamas ultimate. is oppressing its own people. A, eradicating Hamas will liberate the Palestinian people from the oppression of Hamas. The Palestinian people are suffering enormously from their leaders. Their leaders are oppressing them. They hang gays. They throw gays off buildings. There is no free speech. There is no free press. Yeah. This, uh, this is also a place that has been under embargo for 16 years. They, they, Israel effectively controls them. So wouldn't, wouldn't it be argued that Israel is oppressing the, the people in Gaza? Well, actually, Israel left Gaza... Um, withdrew all the settlements from Gaza in 2005. Um, the embargo, I don't know if you've got a map handy to show your viewers, but what that map will show is that Gaza actually shares a border with Egypt. Is, is Egypt um, seizing Gaza? Um, why don't you invite the Egyptian ambassador and ask them why they're not allowing Hamas to infiltrate the border? They don't want terrorism in their country either. Israel, has an Israel taken out that... Uh, there's been an airstrike on that border crossing. There are airstrikes where there are terrorists... But, on the border crossing. But for the right? last 15 years, Egypt controls the rough, that crossing into Gaza. Yep. Where, where is the aid? Where is, where is the food? Well, the where aid is the can't water? get in there now because there's been an airstrike. Well, there's now, been an airstrike because there are terrorists. Right. Um, I wanted to ask you, if, if it can't be fixed with, militarily, with intervention, how, what's a long-term fix here? What's, is there any peaceful resolution that you can see? Look, if you're asking me what is the root cause of the conflict... No, no, I'm asking you how, do you, how do you, how do we fix it? Well, how do we fix it? You can only negotiate with people who recognise your right to exist. So as soon as Palestinian leadership um, cease oppressing their people and instead recognise Israel's right to exist, as have other neighbouring Arab countries, the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, that it is a new Middle East. There's one exception. It's with the Palestinians. And Why? because their people are more interested in oppressing them than they are in making peace with Israel. Jeremy Liebler, I know this has been a big couple of days for you, but I really appreciate you coming on to discuss the issue here, and thank you very much for your time. Thanks for having me.
We'll Melbourne Star Clayton Oliver.